So uh, now I'll, I'll hand over the time to Jim who will bring you through how and uh, how do you like develop your VCP. Um, and he'll take you through the three phase process where you highlight different portions of the guide that will be useful for you so that you can have an understanding of what you can uh, find on the guide. Okay, so uh, Jim, over to you. Thanks, Jingyi. Hi, everyone. I'm Jim from EY. So in this 20-minute segment, I will bring you through the VCP process, um, as you can see on this slide right now, um, and how the VCP guide, as well as the VCP workbook, because they come together as a package, how they will help guide you in terms of developing your VCP, right? So this VCP process is a step-by-step -step process. It is split into three phases, uh, phase one, plan and prepare, and then there are three steps underneath that, and we'll narrow in into each step in turn as we go along phase two, mitigate and respond, and then phase three, recover and review. So the VCP guide and workbook was developed in um, to be user-friendly. So there are, um, first of all, there are a number of overview pages that tells you what the step-by-step -step process, but each step is also supplemented by templates, which will be all compiled into an Excel workbook, which is linked to the VCP guide. So there will be links in the VCP guide that you can click and it will bring you to the Excel workbook where while filling up those templates in the workbook as uh, taking reference from the considerations in the VCP guide, you'll be developing your VCP document. And this would be your, your, your Bible in a sense, your North Star when it comes, uh, when crisis does hit, and you can refer to these, doc these documents for your response actions, right? So if you go to the next slide. So let's deep dive into each phase, right? And the each activities for each phase. So in phase one, plan and prepare, um, there are three steps here. The first step is to identify your critical areas. So these, these are the areas that are um, critical in relation to management of volunteers during a crisis. And as you can see in those blue boxes, those two blue boxes underneath that, there are two templates here. And I will show you what each template looks like later on. In step two, that it's assessing risk of volunteer roles. It's again supported by that template at the bottom there, volunteer role risk assessment template. And then the last step is to set up your VCP team. So having understood the scale of your VCP based on those first two steps, who are the people you can put in place um, in terms of executing the response actions in the VCT. Okay, next slide. So let's uh, zoom in into what do we mean by critical areas, right? So there are two components to this. Um, the first is to identify your critical services and volunteer roles, um, as uh, Xingwei has talked about um, previously. Right, it's important that we prioritize and identify which are the services that has to continue during crisis and to ensure that it can continue during crisis so that service delivery, service users' um, needs continue to be met. Okay, so what is considered critical? Like, what are the key considerations to take into account when you want to identify which services are critical? So, for example, if your services have a significant impact on your organization, for example, it caters to a large group of service users, or if service users depend on the services for day-to-day -day needs. For example, maybe seniors, they may need to go to their medical appointments in time and they may need um, volunteers to help them uh, go to their appointments. Regardless of whatever crisis, um, these services may be continued and they may be deemed essential, right? So that's one consideration. Another consideration is whether the organization may be obligated to provide the services due to contractual or legal obligations, or maybe there are no other alternative, or alternative services in place, right? Or if your organization has a BCP in place, a business continuity plan, sometimes they may, uh, you may be able to, able to take reference from that document to identify which are the critical services as well. So to guide you in this process, um, this is how the template looks like. Um, to identify the critical services. So the first column would allow you to list down your services, your, your identified services and programs, as well as the nature of impact the service is discontinued. So that will sort of guide your thinking and evaluating um, if the service is discontinued, what are the impacts? And thus, is it a priority uh, for it to continue during crisis or not? So if we look at this example here, this first example, for student care center volunteers, um, this, in this hypothetical situation, this fictional organization, they may find that the service is non-essential because it, it, can, it can be suspended during a crisis because it, the, the program is about the, the provision of homework support, of reading and numeracy programs. And so this does not, uh, does, does not necessarily meet students' day-to-day -day living needs. It's more about academic support. And so thus the service can be suspended for a period of time. The, um, in that third column, um, it will also guide your thinking in um, identifying the critical volunteer roles that support that program. So for example, 
um, volunteer for the volunteer support role. In this particular program, there are volunteers who alleviate staff workload by supporting activities within the program, such as tutoring students in their homework. Okay, and if volunteers are unable to support the program for any reason, for example, uh, COVID, right? If there is a limitation of the number of people in a venue then the impact is that the staff will have to take over responsibilities and they have to multitask. But this, but this does mean that there's less time spent on each individual student, okay? So that last column, maximum acceptable downtime, is how long can the program be put on hold without having a detrimental effect on your organization or on your service users? So for this hypothetical situation, it's three months, but depending on your um, feedback from your service users, for example, if your program is catering to um, children of parents who are essential workers and they need to be at work during the crisis and they need a program to put their children in when they're away at work, then you may find that the acceptable downtime is, is maybe you can't, you can't be, it can't be suspended because it is an essential program. Or you may get feedback from your staff and you may find that there is uh, limited staff manpower to take over volunteer roles if volunteers can't come. And so, and thus, um, vo volunteers still will still need, there, there must be a way to, they, you must find a way to get volunteers to come, to come into support to ensure that the program continues. So in that case, then that program will be considered essential, right? And there'll be a, there, there, will, there will be not as, there won't be as long as a downtime. Okay, next slide. So that's one part, uh, critical services and volunteer roles. Another part is identifying the critical volunteer management functions, which you can see on the right column. So what this means um, is that uh, you may want to identify the volunteer management processes that, would, that need to continue during a crisis. Okay, and if you can see here, these functions are usually mapped onto the VM Toolkit 2.0 that was developed by NCSS. And in the VCP guide as well, there are links to other resources throughout. So the VM Toolkit 2.0 is one, um, you know, uh, there'll be a role redesign guide as well. So, be, so these resources sort of complement your understanding of how to execute your VCP. But in this particular situation, the, um, the, these VM processes can range from things like getting your organization volunteer ready, such as drafting up your budgets, you know, and your policies to ensure that, um, that, that your organization is ready to accept volunteers, down to volunteer recruitment and selection and volunteer training and so on. Um, next slide, please. So this uh, template, the VM Impact Assessment Template, will sort of guide you in um, assessing which are the volunteer management processes that, that you may want to continue during a crisis. And in both the VCP guide and in the template, there would be specific examples for each stage of the volunteer management uh, process. So if you focus your attention on the blue columns here, so for example, getting organization volunteer ready. Um, in this situation, in this example, they may find that um, a volunteer management training for staff should continue during a crisis. But during a crisis, they may need to scale back the training so that staff have more time to focus on core functions. So what can you do to ensure that this volunteer management pro processes will continue to evolve and adjust in response to the crisis? That's where we go into the mitigations, but we'll come back to that shortly as there'll be a phase on mitigations as well. And we'll be looking back on this template as well. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so having identified your critical uh, services, critical roles and critical volunteer management functions, um, step two is about assessing the risk of your roles based on these three criteria as listed here. Um, for example, the nature of your volunteer activity. So when assessing your uh, volunteer roles and your volunteers and your services, you may want to evaluate, is the activity back-end or front-facing, right? How many people are involved in the volunteer session? What, what is the location of the volunteer activity? So for example, COVID, right? COVID, it, it's definitely more high risk if the activity is conducted. If it's, if it's a lot of fun-free, front-facing interaction, there's a lot of people in an enclosed area. In that case, it would be a high-risk um, you know, role, especially if your in-service users are vulnerable, such as seniors or very young children. So we go to the next slide. Yeah, and so this template, the volunteer role risk assessment template, will guide you in uh, identifying the risk levels as well. So you can see these columns here map onto those key criteria that were, that were listed on the previous template. So uh, a previous slide. So for example, um, tutors at uh, this SEP program, um, you may find that with tutors, they are usually front facing. Um, in this example, they may be dealing with 40 plus students in one class um, and the students are usually very young. So the risk level is usually high. 
Okay. So having gotten an understanding of, you know, your services, your roles, your, um, the risk level of your roles that will guide you in understanding what are the mitigations you can put in place. And after this, um, as mentioned, there would be a sec section on developing your VCT team as well. The key people you need to put in place to ensure that that is um, that all these mitigations are put in place. Uh, in the interest of time, I can't go into that in detail, but in the VCT guide, there will be guidance around that as well. Next slide. So this is the second phase, phase to mitigate and respond. So having an, getting a high level understanding of which are your priorities, what are the strategies you need to put in place to ensure continuity during a crisis? So there are three steps in this. Again, the, four, the fourth step here, the fourth step of the overall process, it's about preparing the mitigations for both the critical services roles and as well as your VM functions. Um, the fifth step is about preparing communication and engagement strategies. So in tandem to preparing your mitigations, it is also important to remember that um, your, of your key stakeholders who you need to keep updated. For, um, um, there was a uh, point raised um, in the earlier chat session on how when you're so busy keeping your head above water during crisis, you may tend to forget or lose track of the people you need to uh, communicate to. So this, the VCP guide will provide guidance on that. What are the key messages to communicate to? And as well as considerations, to take into account when you want to manage your volunteers' well-being. That is also very important during the crisis. The sixth step is about preparing for activation of the VCP. So the VCP guide and will, will provide a process on how to activate the VCP. For example, you want to obtain approvals from management first. You want to make sure, do a review to make sure that the VCP, the VCP is updated and fit for the current purpose. And, um, and then you want to activate the VCP. So we have get provided a example process for organizations to customize and tweak according to their needs. So for this particular segment, I will focus on those two steps. Yeah, um, and I'll show you the templates for those two steps as well. Next slide. So for step four, prepare mitigation strategies, um, the VCP guide lists in detail the key types of mitigations to put in place to ensure the continuity of um, volunteer management related processes and services. So for example, updating policies and SOPs, if you see that number one there. So you may want to adjust your SOPs to ensure safe, dis dis safe dis distancing and safe volunteering during a COVID crisis, for example. Or you want to adapt your volunteer roles. You may want to redesign your volunteer roles so that it is, um, like again, COVID. Um, if you want to ensure volunteering continue, you can actually readjust it so that it, volunteering can continue in a virtual format. And then the third step is forecasting volunteer resource requirements. Um, so I won't go into detail to all the steps here. You can find that in the guide. I'll narrow down, I will focus on that third mitigation, which is forecasting resource requirements. Go to the next slide. So yeah, so for example, um, you may want to, so what, what this means is that um, one, one mitigation is that you may want to plan your volunteer resource requirements ahead of time so that when crisis does hit, you know what are the steps you need to take in order to make sure that you have the volunteer numbers you need, right? Um, so you may need volunteer additional volunteers or maybe even less volunteers depending on what the crisis is. But the typical situations that cause for this mitigation is when there is an increased demand for specialized skills from volunteers. For example, with COVID, um, uh, because um, we are now unable to meet face-to-face, -face, we may need more volunteers who are well-versed in digital and IT skills. Uh, there may be a manpower shortage caused by regulatory restrictions or there may be increased demand for services such as counseling or mental wellness, right? So mitigations you can put in place to ensure you have the volunteer numbers you need would be to train current volunteers in the new skills needed, in the new skills needed, to set up partnership arrangements with other agencies to provide support during a crisis, or to build a reserve pool of volunteers during peacetime now to tap on during crisis when crisis does hit. So if you go to the next slide, so if we, go, if we think back to the templates I've shown previously, um, the examples we've gone through sort of, would sort of anchor how we would identify the mitigations, right? So for example, in, in this situation, tutors at SEP, you have found that their risk level of their, for their roles are high. And the organization may find that um, they may need uh, uh, more volunteers uh, but they will want to ensure that the volunteering can continue with, let's say, in a virtual format, right? So while drafting up this template, they may find that their, source, their current source of volunteers are usually from youth or university students, okay? So in terms of the mitigation measures, that column there, in addition to volunteers having to monitor, monitor their health and you know, take ART tests before volunteering, or staff to take over volunteering activities, 
In, in the events that you may actually need more volunteers, a mitigation could be to expand the source of your volunteers beyond university students to include all demographics, to tap onto potential volunteers who may have the time and resources to do virtual volunteering. Okay, so that could be an example of a mitigation to put in place. We go to the next slide. And same for your um, VM, volunteer management processes, right? So in the example we've talked about previously for VM training for staff, we talked about scaling back training for staff. Um, but a mitigation we can put in place is that VM training could, can continue, but instead of face-to-face -face training, training can now be conducted virtually and at the staff's own time. Right? So again, that's another mitigation to put in place. Next slide. Okay, so as, this, as mentioned before, in addition to your mitigation strategies, it is also important to draft up your communication and engagement strategy. So this involves identifying your key stakeholders and what are the messages to communicate, right? So the BCP guide has provided a non-exhaustive um, list of things to update your stakeholders on. For example, if the crisis first hits, you may want to acknowledge the crisis situation, share the next steps, what are the SOPs, is the volunteering activity continuing or not? Um, so you, can, you are able to take these messages, hopefully you'll be able to take these messages and sort of craft your communications message based on these ideas. Um, next page. And the template will uh, give you a space to list down your stakeholder groups. Okay, um, description of impact, the, uh, the potential concerns that they may have, and what are the engagement strategies to address those concerns. So for example, for volunteer facilitators, for a group activity support in a senior activity center, um, you may find that um, their concerns may be volunteers will need more guidance on how volunteering activities can continue under the new safe distancing regulations. So a strategy could be you, you com communicate your new volunteering SOPs, you ensure there is a channel, a two-way channel for volunteers to ask questions, and you conduct the virtual town halls and allocate time for Q&A. So this will sort of keep you uh, on track and um, it's sort of a reference point for you to decide, to, to, to find out which stakeholders you can reach out to during a crisis so that you won't be scrambling and trying to, uh, you know, uh, trying to find those stakeholder groups you know, in case you miss them. Next slide. Okay, so we come to the last phase, recovery and review, re review. I'll go through this a bit more quickly. But what this phase is basically about is planning ahead, right? So after having put in place those mitigations um, to ensure that volunteering can continue under the new normal, what can you do to ensure that it goes back to BAU? Right, so for step seven, it's about planning for recovery. Plan step eight is about reviewing your crisis re response, reviewing the effectiveness of how you have responded to the crisis thus far and what are the areas of enhancement. And step nine is you need to, it's important to update and maintain your VCP so that it's always updated and ready for activation regard, uh, whenever the crisis does occur. Okay, and again, um, those templates will support you through that. So if you go to the next slide. So for step seven, planning for recovery, the VCP guide provides you with key considerations on what to recover. So for example, if there is a climate crisis, like a flooding, for example, and you may have lost infrastructure and equipment. So the template will provide you with a space to um, draft up a plan on how will it be recovered, you know, the people to be appointed to, you know, to carry out this recovery process, stakeholders who can help with the recovery efforts. Um, the, the template will also help you uh, put in place a timeline on when, it will be, when, when the recovery will be implemented and how much will the recovery cost? If you go to the next slide, and this, uh, and this template will provide you with that view. Next slide, please. And for reviewing crisis response, step eight, it's about reviewing the effectiveness of the response based on these key considerations, such as, was the um, response plan ex executed well? Was it flexible to accommodate the crisis situation as it continued to evolve? Um, did, it meet, did it meet stakeholder needs? What were the improvement points? Okay, so next slide. So this template would list down, will provide you a space to list down the review actions conducted. So obviously when you want to assess a uh, response plan, it involves a number of stakeholders, right? You will want to gain feedback from everyone impacted to find out where you can improve. So if you go to that second uh, example there, collecting feedback from volunteers in ABC program on their experience of volunteering during a crisis. Um, they may find, uh, the VCP team may find that, uh, may get feedback that volunteers felt that communications on the latest updates were inconsistent and conflicting. And so there is um, a need to enhance communication strategies. Okay, and so um, this would document all those follow-up actions that you need to take, put in place to make sure your response action is strengthened for the future. Next slide. And so that last uh, step, test and maintain, is about means ensuring that your
always updated. And so this can happen in a few ways. Um, you can put in a regular schedule uh, maintenance uh, update, for example, an annual review of your BCP, just to ensure that it is kept up to date with all of the changes in your environment or within your organization. You could align with your internal BCP. So when your BCP is being reviewed, you can um, align the BCP in accordance to that as well. Um, in addition to those regularly scheduled, uh, to those regular schedules, you could also update the BCPs after there is a significant change in the external environment, after a significant change within the asset, within the organization. Um, after a crisis or emergency or after testing. So you could draft up a hypothetical BCP and then sort of like test it um, across the organization and get, get, get feedback. And from there, you can identify areas to improve and repair for when an actual crisis does hit. Uh, next slide. And so this template is a proposed list of um, annual reviews, for example, which you can customize um, on your, based on your needs, uh, as well as indicate the timeline on which these activities are completed. Okay, next slide. Okay, so that is it from me. So to recap, right, the VCP process is a step-by-step -step process. Um, the VCP guide and workbook will provide you with that process as well, um, with the templates to support you in your development. And upon completion of all these steps, um, you would have your own BCP document. Uh, so yeah, so that is it from me. I'll pass the time back to Jing. Yeah, thanks, Jim. I uh, really appreciate you going through the BCP guide and uh, the workbook as well. So for those who have not uh, downloaded the BCP guide, uh, please do download it. Uh, we will send the link on the Zoom chat shortly. Okay, so do uh, read through uh, and having heard what Jim has said, just go through and see um, the content with the lens of your organization services and your volunteer roles. So the guide uh, and the workbook they are sent on the uh, Zoom chat, they are free. Uh, there's, no, uh, there's no charges, so you can download it and send it to your entire organization or whoever is relevant um, in terms of the department colleagues. Yeah.